All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. guys and welcome back to my Evil Dead film series review. We are now at chapter 3 in this franchise in Army of Darkness. Thank you so much guys for clicking out. Really do appreciate it. And if you have not checked them out yet, I've already reviewed the first two Evil Dead films. Which I'll have in the description below. So check those out when you can. Let's get this started folks. So after being accidentally transported into the Middle Ages and being caught by Lord Arthur and his men... Ash is forced to team up with them in order to save the people from the forces of the Deadites after unknowingly waking them to get back to his own time. This is always considered to be the funny one. The most comical one. The one that always tickled my funny bone. As it should have. <laughs> now I understand it's not going to be for everyone. Some people prefer the straight up horror side to this franchise like the first like the original and the 2013 remake obviously some like that more serious horror take on this thing but others like the comical whimsical and slapstickish side me i never really cared i'm more lenient i'm i prefer both I mean, as long as it's a good story and as long as it's a good movie and as long as it's entertaining i'm fine with it i I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I've never really been picky. But was this worthy of this franchise? Or was this just too bone-headed? Let's find out and start off with the positives for Army of Darkness. I gotta say, I like the way it began. After the whole rights issue that they had with Evil Dead 2, on how they had to redo that whole entire opening for that film, and how it made no sense to the context of what the first one brought, I like the way that they handled it better in Army of Darkness. So basically it was like the opening of a TV show episode to where it just wraps it up nice and neatly with a bow in like the first five or six minutes to where you don't, you don't, it doesn't really feel necessary to where you even have to watch those first two films. It just lays it out for you in, you know just very nicely and very clearly Sure, they had to re-film some of the scenes, like with Ash's hand being possessed. That was obviously re-filmed. That was not the way it went down in two. But it was nice, you know, just the way that they laid it out. All up to the point to where Ash got sucked into that vortex, into that time zone, to where it felt right. It felt proper the way that they began this because... It basically just negated you having to watch the first two, like, at all. Like, all you had to do was watch that little first five-minute segment or three-minute segment of this film to where they just lay it all out, and it just, you're fine. You're good. And I like the way they handled that. It just made you feel like you're not really missing much if you do miss the first two. As much as I love those two first two films, the first two Evil Dead films, you don't really necessarily have to watch that in order for you to enjoy this one because of that opening of this film alone. It was just done very nicely and I really did appreciate that. You know, especially for anybody who's wanting to get into this series and somebody that wants to, you know, just have a good time with it. Plus, as that scene goes on, after all that is said and known with the opening and the introduction, and after all that is said and done, as Ash is getting sucked into that vortex before he goes back in time, you hear this really cool theme song, which is basically the theme of the film. And you see the film's title in smoky letters. You, you first see Bruce Campbell, Army of Darkness. You hear that really cool theme song. I really do enjoy that theme song. And it really does help by that in the third act, before the big battle goes down... You see the undead army walking up towards the castle and you see them playing with their own bones as flute to that song, like chanting that song. And then you see another skeleton using boneheads as drums, which added to the campiness and silliness that this film brought, which was pretty crazy. <laughs> the whole Middle Ages setting. 
you know, to where you have Ash being sucked in this vortex, this time zone thing or whatever, that he gets sucked into, and you knew they were going somewhere when you watch Evil Dead 2 at the end of that film. You knew it was going somewhere because it clearly shows him being sucked into that vortex. So naturally, it was a natural place for the story to take place for Army of Darkness. It, it was natural to, for them to do that, and it was a nice direction change. It wasn't just a movie about these kids going to this cabin in the woods and getting killed off, and this one guy, you know, running around and being chased by a demon in a cabin. You know, at a certain point, it just started feeling a little old. So, I like the fact that they changed it up a little bit. They, they freshened it up by setting it in this era, by having this guy, you know, time travel, going to this castle that... Obviously, uh, that was actually mentioned a little bit in Evil Dead 2. You get a little bit of context there. But I liked how they actually went to this setting for Army of Darkness. And again, like I said, it was pretty obvious where they were going. I liked that concept alone. It was a cool, fresh take. And it was pretty enjoyable. The comedy take in this was great. You know, I mentioned in the first two reviews that how the first one was just straight up horror. Second one was just all over the place. It didn't even exactly know where it was. Army of Darkness leans heavily on the comedy, especially on the slapstick. You cannot convince me that this movie did not take after the Three Stooges, that this movie wasn't inspired after the Three Stooges and some other things. Granted, I do give it. But there was so much inspiration from the Three Stooges. And me, being a fan of the Three Stooges, I grew up watching those black and white old classic TV shows of the Three Stooges. Ever since I can remember, I have watched the Three Stooges probably since I was like six or seven years old. So whenever I got around to watching this movie, I just, I just had to throw that out in comparison because there was so much inspiration from the Three Stooges in this that it just... It was so much in your face, especially the whole graveyard scene. Like after he retrieves the book and the dead starts rising, and you see those bony hands coming up from the graves. Bruce Campbell spends like five minutes on the ground just getting slapped around and poked in the eye and gouged and just punched around. And it's just, again, straight up Three Stooges. That scene alone makes me laugh my ass off every single time. Almost to the point where I cry, especially the first time when I watched this. You cannot convince me otherwise that that's, that was not a heavy inspiration from the Three Stooges. No. No way, Jose. <laughs> but that's one reason why Evil Dead 2 never really worked out for me. Because that film was just all over the place. That it just it didn't know what it was. So, with Army of Darkness, they quickly corrected that, they fixed it, and they decided to go on a more comedy route. You know, yeah, there was like some horror sprinkled in every now and then, but at a certain point, that kind of felt like an afterthought, but in a good way. Because it, it was actually a good story about this guy time traveling by accident, and him teaming up with the Knights of the Round Table, I'm just going to go ahead and say it that way, going up against this... Army of the Dead. And it was vastly entertaining, especially with the comical slapstick route that they decided to take. And it's all thanks to Bruce Campbell, who once again delivered. Now, I also mentioned in the other two reviews that he's one of those characters that you wouldn't expect him to survive in a situation like this. But because that they went grander, they went bigger, obviously there was more money thrown into the production of this film. It was done by a bigger studio and Universal. It was a bigger than life story. And even though he was great in the first two Evil Deads and those independently made, yet pretty good Evil Dead films, he really fit just perfectly in this movie because, again, it was grander, it was larger than life, more money was thrown at it, it was done by a bigger studio, and the way he carried himself, the way he carried this character... And I also mentioned this in the first two films review. He's just one of those characters that you wouldn't expect him to survive something like this. Again, I mentioned this. He shows his cowardly side a lot more in this. 
But then he flips it around and he shows his warrior side. In other words, whenever the chips are down, he gets to a point in this character to where, yes, he's a coward in some scenes, but in other scenes, he makes up for that. You see, he kind of like balances out, but you never know what to get from this character. And Bruce Campbell, once again, he delivers on that front so much. <laughs> he's just a character that one minute he could care less. He's All he's wanting to do is get back to his own timeline. He's wanting to go home. He's a bit of an ass about it at times. And cowardly, he wants nothing to do with this. Even after he finds out the people are in danger, after he wakes up the undead. And then... When it really gets tough, he flips it around on you and he's like, he steps up, he takes charge. But that's what makes this character interesting. That's what makes this character unique. Yeah! I even like the way he played Bad Ash, who actually turns out to be the leader of the undead army um, closer to the third act. The main baddie of this film, the main villain. I like the way he plays that character as well because he plays it with his own quirkiness, the way Bruce Campbell usually does it. He plays it with his, with his own quirky, slapstickish kind of way. But at the same time, he's trying to be serious. He wants that book. He commands his army. He takes charge, but at the same time, he's funny about it. He's He goes about it in a silly way. Pick yourselves up and Sally fuck! Sally fuck! Sally forth. Prosthetics in this film was done really well. The way they made the bad Ash look, he looked like a zombie in a way because of what happened to him earlier. And just the way that, you know, just present himself was pretty well. Again, Bruce Campbell aces. Now one thing I do admit, the gore does kind of take a back seat. It's a bigger budgeted movie, a bigger studio behind it. It's not independently made. Of course they're gonna have limits, they're gonna have handcuffs, but I do admit that the comedy does make up for that. The only gory scene we do get is it's kind of weird. Like It involves the pit at the beginning of the film where this guy gets shoved into the you know, dark hole. And then next thing you know, you see all this blood splatter out. Which tells me that the monster probably ate him and turned into a big fat balloon and just exploded everywhere. I don't know, that was just kind of weird to me, but it is what it is. It was still kind of satisfying. You know, the only gory scene we ever get in the film. And visuals, just like in the first two, was not lost here. You get more of those zoom-in shots. Those shots that I always praise this franchise for. The ones that I know this franchise for. There's a scene in this where a demon is chasing Bruce Campbell through the forest. You can see all the tree stumps and the trees and limbs fall down and just crack in the middle. Director Sam Raimi adds something new to this to where you get a lot of close-up shots, zoom-in shots. You get angles going this way and angles going that way as he's screaming and the camera going up and down it, it was just crazy because this was done by a bigger studio and more money was thrown at it you could definitely tell because of those shots alone compared to the first two films many people will put this in their negative column i'm sure but because i knew the type of film this was the film knew exactly what it was i actually didn't mind the skeleton army especially by the third act when they started attacking the castle and they had that big battle the way the skeleton army looked, again, inspired by another film that I know of. I've never quite fully seen, I've seen scenes of it. But it was, it really depicted a lot down to the T of Jason and the Argonauts. Now, I'm not really sure if that's what this movie was actually inspired from. If that's what the skeleton army of this was inspired from. But if you go and watch scenes from that film or watch it, like, completely, a lot of the, the skeleton army in that film was depicted about the same. It was the same exact thing. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Like I said, I never really watched that other film. But from what I've seen of it, like I said, I watched the clips. And it was like definitely like straight out from that film. Yes, I do admit it does look a little cheesy. It does get a little crazy. But this was 1993. Way before digital green screen and CGI improved. The effects were a little limited around that time. You get all these crazy scenes in that third act battle where Bruce Campbell knocks the skeleton out and you see you hear a bop 
just like in the Three Stooges when they would bop each other on the side of the head. Again, another inspiration from the Stooges. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Oh, I'm blind. I'm blind. <laughs> Moving on in the negatives, I never really bought into this whole love triangle between this girl named Sheila and Ash to where they tried to make this character kind of like a love interest to Bruce Campbell's character. I never really quite bought into that. I just felt like it kind of veered away from the tone and pacing of the film. Especially by the third act, whenever she started getting possessed and the bad Ash did whatever the hell that he did to her, did to her. And by the time it got to that part, I was thinking to myself, this is stupid. Why should I care? I, I never really cared for this relationship. Why should I care about that? I felt like it was completely pointless and I, I never really got on board. And that's just detrimental to me. And last but not least, there's this whole thing at the beginning after that nice little wrap up that I mentioned that I really did like where after he gets sucked into that vortex after he gets sucked back in time he falls from the sky and he lands on the ground and they show this at the end of Evil Dead 2 to where they hold him up high as a hero after this creature starts attacking him he takes out his gun and blows its head off that did not happen in Army of Darkness like at all they treat him like a slave that whole contradictory part to where you're thinking, you know, what? that's not what happened. So it's like they contradicted themselves, like, fully by the time that this film began. Never really was quite on board with that. Setting all that aside, point being, this entry actually did live up. Film was entertaining. I didn't mind the slapstick comical zany side. It's a happy accident. So, Army of Darkness, what were your thoughts on it? Were you a fan of the whole direction change from the first two, special from the second one? Are you a fan of the whole comedy slapstick you know, route that they took? Was this a favorite of the franchise for you because of that? Or do you prefer the more serious tone like the original or like the 2013 remake? Leave me a comment down below and give me your thoughts. Thank you so much guys for watching this. I really do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, comment, and share the big four. Make sure to click that bell icon so you don't miss a thing as always. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.